All right, so what are you doing? You're the heir to the Fanta Soda Fortune. You cover basketball for Fox Sports 1. Yep. That's my main man, John Fanta, who's here right now. He was the guy that had all the, uh, the info on Danny Hurley allegedly being interested in the Laker job, but it was all a big charade to get more money out of UConn and pave the way for J.J. Redick to embarrass himself. Anyhow, John, good to see you, pal. How are you? Good morning, guys. Happy draft day. Happy yeah. draft day. Yeah. It's like Christmas for John and Tim Hardaway. Yeah. Of course, it's the worst draft in the history of the <laughs> NBA, according to most draft experts. Uh, all right, let me start with the obvious one. Is Bronny James going to be drafted either tonight in the first round or tomorrow early evening in the second round? John, what do you say? He is not getting drafted tonight. Okay. There's 0% chance of that happening. Okay, I like that 0% chance. Out there. Mm -hmm. Good, so, and that's right. Uh, Bronny James, I feel bad for him because he is not an NBA-ready player. Correct. It is in his best interest to come back to college and play potentially somewhere else, transfer portal, you can go wherever you want, but play for a good program and develop. He needs to be at the college level developing. He is not ready for the NBA. He will get overwhelmed by NBA players. Uh, nobody's going to pull any punches when they're guarding him no. and he gets in a game. But this is a guy that, for me, is not going to, to last very long in the NBA. And I feel bad for him because the discourse around this, guys, there's way too much pressure being put on this kid. When have we ever talked about a 55th pick in the NBA draft? We the have answer to. is never. He's that. not ready for the NBA. Yeah, is he a G League talent yet or no? Well, there's a lot of guys that can that can get inserted into a G League game. Okay. But but right now, I'd rather stay in college where I could benefit off my NIL than play in the G League where who's right. watching? He will make a few million bucks because he's LeBron's son, and I think he got made a decent amount of dough at USC as well. In a year in which he averaged all of what, like two points, three points a game, and was their last offensive option on arguably the worst team in the Pac-12. Uh, just before I wrap up the Bronny stuff, because I agree with you, I think we all do, that he's not an NBA player, and I don't think he ever will be, but, you know, give the kid the opportunity to fight for it and get better and better, and we can deal with him somewhere down the road. Could you see Danny Hurley taking Bronny James into the UConn program to do LeBron a solid and teach his son how to play basketball, which is something LeBron apparently didn't do? No, because Bronny James couldn't handle playing for UConn. Oh, there's a bomb. That. I love that. Here, here's the but, but he thinks he can play in the NBA. Well, his dad said that he's better than some NBA players yeah. that he's gone up against, which was not right. I mean, I look, I grew up in Cleveland. So so in the class that I'm at, LeBron James delivered my city that has won nothing, a championship. Right. All right? But we got to be honest here. Bronny James is not ready to be a marquee college player. Nor alone an NBA player. I agree. It's I, not happening. Let's move on from Brian. Let's go to what happened uh, late last night. Uh, NBA-wise, the New York Knicks became uh, the odds-on favorite to win the NBA championship. I know we all agree on that. By acquiring Mikael Bridges. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, Timmy. Uh, <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> because that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> from, from the Brooklyn Nets, they gave up five uh, first-round picks for them. Are unprotected. There's a pick swap in there as well. But, uh, Tim, you love McHale's game. Oh, I love his game. Timmy thinks McHale fits right into the Knicks no from the question. standpoint of plays defense, which you have to with Thibodeau, and obviously he's a catch-and-shoot jump shooter, uh, can flush it and, down and as well as anyone. Anyway. Now, yeah. he, he's a go-to player late in a ball game. Yeah, that you now, go to him and he gets you a shot and he gets you a, a, a good, decent shot. I know college is your forte, but we're watching something materialize now that we have never seen in the history of the NBA. And that is the core group of guys that won a national championship at the college level. Now officially, now that Mikhail's a part of the New York Knicks with DiVincenzo and Brunson and Hart, that was the core group of that Villanova championship team a few years back. They're now going to try to replicate that at the pro level. We've never seen that. We've never seen it. And it's a testament to what Jay Wright built over his Villanova dynasty run of titles in 2016 and 2018. Mikhail Bridges is wired, he's long, he makes things happen for a team on a team that already has a superstar in Jalen Brunson. When they made this move last night, we all, all our jaws dropped. The fact is, how close were the New York Knicks to the Eastern Conference Finals this past year? And if they stay fully healthy, are they not there? 100%. They're there. Oh, yes. oh, they're, yeah, there. they're there. To me, right, you get Mikhail Bridges, and I agree with you. Yes. The pursuit for a championship 
is obviously all in, and Mikael Bridges makes the Knicks a title contender. How about that, Tim? Go ahead. Negative. Why? Negative, because they don't have the, the, the pieces that's coming off the bench. They don't have a, a guy that's going to come off the bench and give them scoring power. They don't have a guy off the bench that's going to – look at the bench. Yeah, you, you DiVincenzo can score. DiVincenzo, Hart, Hart and, and McBride, you go, you go, you go consistently go with them – Night in and night out for 82 games. I'm going to because I watched what they did in the playoffs all banged up mm -hmm. when benches get shorter. Yeah. And DiVincenzo proved big shot moment. He can knock down okay. a three. Hart's a better defensive player, but Hart also came up with some big offense for you. Okay. Uh, they're a great defensive team without an OB uh, on the floor as other, well. Other teams are getting better. Other teams are getting better just like they're getting better. Yeah. And the other team's benches are better than their t the New York Knicks bench right now. Go. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum dynamic duo during the playoffs it felt like the Knicks it was Jalen Brunson forcing things at times forcing the we, had, sure. to. we had, had to we had to that was yeah he had to we, we understand By getting that. Mikhail Bridges no longer does exactly he have to force exactly. the issue constantly I agree and to me I, I get that other teams are getting better but did the Knicks just not get significantly better with this move and I think they, they did and did they not say last night here's the thing if you're going to contend for a championship, running it back doesn't work in the NBA if you haven't gotten there before. Sure. They had to do something significant. For me, it's a home run move for the Nets. Where were they going with McCall right. Bridges? And it gives they, them, it gives them a this. bunch of picks. Of so, look, the picks are not going to be better than in the mid-20s if the Knicks do what right. they're supposed to do. But the Nets have no talent. They had one guy there, and they needed draft picks. But, but, but don't I, I, you see I believe... a world where, where now Brunson and Bridges – can be feeding off one another. Randall. It's not, oh, it's no question. Randall. Randall and o OG Ananobi. You know, I, that, that's your first five. And I see OG Ananobi playing in the second rotation, being a score in that rotation, but not in the first rotation because you got Bridges, you got Randall, and you got Brunson. I see a 60 plus one team with the New York Knicks. Now, hold on, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, wait. I, you yes. went to 70. Yeah. Huh? Now, now you're down to 60. Did well, I say 70? Wait, wait. You did My say 70. 75 and 70. No. <laughs> Since when are we celebrating yeah. 60 win seasons? I want to know what you're doing yeah. tonight. Yeah. 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 When's well, the last time the Knicks won 60 games in the season? Right. The answer is never. <laughs> right, uh, right. So yeah, you got to start there first. Okay. John Fantas here. John, of course, covers uh, college basketball predominantly, but uh, the NBA as well. I made the point earlier, and I, and I think the guys are with me on this. You know, for me as a, as a basketball fan and aficionado, according to Joe Dumars, you know, this draft pisses me off because I'm a jingoist. I'm an American. I want American basketball to dominate uh, globally. And what I'm looking at this year, uh, I'm not a draft pick, but I've read all the reports, and you are a guy that does it. You know, the first pick in the draft is most likely a kid out of France. Mm -hmm. The second pick in the draft is most likely a kid out of France. Mm -hmm. You could argue that one of the Kentucky kids goes third, but the next pick's a European kid, the next pick's a European kid. And I'm saying to myself, I can't pronounce their names. I don't know who they are. I've never seen them play. And what happened to my game? The game is being overtaken now by the yeah. European game. And I'm not even going to talk about Canada, which is starting to make inroads into my game because they're pissed off that we took over hockey over the last 30 years from them. But walk me through this particular draft and why our best college kids are not as good or NBA ready as these kids that I've never seen uh, play over in France. Because the overarching stock of this draft at the college level just isn't at the level of other drafts. It's not even remotely but close. Why, where'd all the great American basketball players go? European basketball has evolved. Whether whether you want Have to we or gotten not. worse or have they just gotten better? I, I think the way that we play offensively is not at the IQ level. That, that, that European basketball has played at. Exactly. If you which ask, is what Kobe said 15 years ago, yes. Yes. that this was going to happen. I was at the Nike Hoop Summit, which we had on FS1 back in May. Okay. And I was talking with the American kids, 17-year-old kids, 18-year-old yeah, kids. And the kids said to me, look, I don't want to insult anybody. I'm not going to call any names. But I started, because some of the American kids still played on the international team. Okay. Went with right. their, their family's mm -hmm. history. Right. And they're like, look, I don't want to insult anybody. But the international kids are smarter to play with than the, than the high school kids that I'm playing with and mo the, most of the AAU talent I'm playing with. This is a sign of a trend in basketball. Does it draw ratings? Does it increase viewership? No. no. People don't know who Zachary Rissache is. Now, now I do. The basketball people do. You're going to grow in your aficionado status. I'm is that the kid going to Florida, the nine-foot-tall kid? 
No, no, that's not that no, kid. That's no, not that's him. Not him. <laughs> different kid. Different kid. But I, but I think that is that the Chinese girl? No, no, no. no, no. no. Okay, <laughs> just, checking. <laughs> just checking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think, I There's think, re, I think Zachary Reese, the six foot nine, uh, dynamic you know, guard forward, very versatile. Shot close to 50% in his first 34 pro games this past year. I think that he goes number one. I think Alex Sar goes two to the Washington. And they're Wizards. both French. Mm -hmm. And they're both French. I know you disagree on who you would take at number one. Yeah, I like. I I, I asked. I think there'll be some some recognizable names. They'll go early. I think Cleo will go early. Shepard will go early. I think Castle will go early. I think that you'll see Dillingham go early. You'll see Connect go early. Like all those guys will be in the lottery there. But I like Cleo just because I know what I'm going to get. I know what I'm going to get because the the Sars and the Risa Shays is just there's a there's a, a low floor and a high ceiling. What I would much rather be in this draft, right, is the Trailblazers at seven, yep. the Grizzlies there. At nine, the Spurs have four Why? and eight. The Thunder? Because because in a weak draft class, you're not going to get criticized if you're in those positions and you miss. But the Hawks, it's a stroke of luck. They had three percent odds to get the number one pick. This is the year you do not want the number one pick. <laughs> if they could trade it, they would. But they right. can't find a trade partner. Right. They've got assets they'd like to get back from San Antonio. San Antonio has no no interest in doing that. They want to just get Victor Wembanyama some help at four and eight. Don't be surprised if they. Do something to help Wemby and get a fellow Frenchman to play alongside ah, him tonight. But but I would much rather have something deeper into the lottery so that I could go out and get a Dalton Connect or go out and get a Devin Carter, who is my riser on this board. I got to say this. You know, the New York Knicks have a bad history with drafting French people, uh, French basketball players, uh, going, going back with, to Frederick Weiss. If I may, 20, 20 years Neil ago, Kina. or Frank Nikita Lina, who also stunk, all right? <laughs> but if you're going to tell me that one day the San Antonio Spurs are going to be NBA champions and a third of their roster is going to be French-born dudes, I'm done with basketball. Like, at that point, we got to give up basketball and come up with, like, lacrosse or something. Well, you're right. Because what, what are we doing, Tim? Where, where, where's the next great Tim Hardaway playing on the playgrounds in Chicago who tells his family, I'm going to be the next great basketball player, and no kid from France is going to beat me? What's going on, man? Uh, th that's what I say, too. I mean, I, 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 it's disappointing to me. It it's, should it, be. It, it you got to go home. Go home, start a Tim Hardaway league, and let's go find some kids in Chicago. Because New York ain't producing them either. The days of Kenny Smith and Kenny Anderson. Right, Rosh the kids Strickland. that went to Archbishop Malloy. Yes. Uh, and Chris some, Mullen. Chris Mullen. Yes. Right, uh, Ron Artest, great yeah. uh, kid, uh, high school basketball player. All the great, skip to Malou. All the Marbury. great players, right? Yeah. God, Sham, God. Yeah. What happened to the New York City point guard? I don't want to know. You got to ask them that. I will. Now, <laughs> before I let you go, John, I was reading some of your stuff over the last couple of days, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm sure I get this right, but uh, I'm of the belief, having read a lot of your, uh, your takes on the NBA, let me just say quickly, we're not doing WTF today, so stop telling me to do it. All right, here we go. All right? You believe that J.J. <laughs> Redick is going to be successful head coaching the Lakers. Now, as you know, the only coaching he's ever done was in a league that I created called the Double Nickel Swish League, and he won the third grade championship. He won the fourth grade back championship, back. Yep. and now he's in the NBA. So if you happen to be an elementary school uh, gym teacher, you might be coaching the Knicks one day. That could happen. <laughs> but why do you think J.J. Redick is going to be successful coaching the Lakers, not a very good basketball team? Well, then by your logic, J.J. Redick should run all of third and fourth grade American basketball because that might solve your problem of eventually getting those American ah, prospects you go. to then step there up. There you go. I'll I think it. this is going to work out, okay? The third, fourth grade storyline, I, I get that you're going <laughs> to to hold in on that. I I, uh, yes, yes. And look, there's a lot of coaches out there who are like, really, this is this is what it's come to, the traditionalist coaches, a lot sure. of coaches that I talk to. But here's the deal. If you look at J.J. Reddick growing up in Roanoke, Virginia, coming from humble beginnings, he has worked for everything that he has gotten. He was a good college player at first, his first two years. At Duke. He went back into the lab and said, I'm going to become the best player in the country. He went from the best player in the country to people saying, he's small, he's undersized, he's weak. He's not going to be an NBA player. He played 15 years in the NBA. Then he gets into TV. People are like, ah, you know, they're evaluating him as a TV analyst. He becomes the guy that's at the top of the food chain there calling the NBA finals. Everything that he's touched, he has then been able to get to the pinnacle. 
So I am I, going I would to buy. I keep backing that a little bit. He was not the greatest college basketball player in the country either. He was good. I wouldn't say he was the best. And I would say this. He has a patron saint who has looked out for him since he was in high school. And that's Mike Krzyzewski. Mm -hmm. And I'm of the belief, after the Hurley thing went south, for whatever the reasons might be, um, Mike Krzyzewski is a consultant to the L.A. Lakers. And as much as I do think LeBron was involved and AD's involved or whatever level they're involved, there's no doubt in my mind that Mike Krzyzewski is the guy that smoothed the sailing here with the Buss family and former comedian Jay Moore, who married Jeannie Buss, who's probably got some say in the matter now as well, to make sure they viewed J.J. Redick through the lens that he wanted them to view him. We will find out. Our, our first taste of what kind of coach he's going to be. It's going to be found out when we see this staff and what it fully looks like. Because Mike Krzyzewski said it to me. He's like, J.J. cannot do it alone. He's no. going to have to surround himself yes. with the right people. Yes, you're absolutely right. You Meaning former survive. players, Tim? Not or former, former players. Coaches. he got to have some real good coaches. I, and, and, and everybody, you know, like I said before, you got to have a assistant coach that can go in there and talk to the guys. The coach can't be that voice all the time. Yes. You got to have an assistant coach that can go in there and say, hey, fellas, you know, X, Y, Z, we need to do better. We got to do better. And that could be Rondo. You know, that, they say that Rondo, uh, LeBron James and AD has a great relationship with okay. Rondo. And they actually want him back a, as a player, as a point guard. So, I mean, that can help. I mean, but that's, you know, that's just talk. We don't know. But you got to have good assistant yep. coaches to develop these guys and to make them understand this is what we got to do to win. Look, uh, Joe Mazzula had Jeff Van Gundy in his ear, so that certainly helped. Yeah. Yeah, Sam Cassell helps. Helps. Yeah, helps. And Sam Cassell. Right. Well, one thing right off the bat. He was comfortable in his own skin in the press conference. Yeah. Th this whole discourse, that's why you guys tell it like it is on this show. Yep. Uh, but not, not every show out there tells it like it is. And, and one of the th points of discourse from his press conference was this F-bomb that he dropped yeah. in the press conference. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest piece of baloney I've ever heard in my life. Okay? He was being himself. Have people never heard that word on television before? Grow up. He was, he was being true to himself. You could say that, that you didn't like it or whatnot. Oh, whatever. I think that he is going to, to be authentic. And I think if there's anybody that LeBron James can't coexist with, you'd have to think it'd be a guy that he co-hosted a podcast with. Yeah, no doubt. We got to yeah. let you go, Sean Fanta. Before I let you go, one very quick question. Uh, you can give me two words to answer the question. What is the first and last name of the first American-born player that will be drafted tonight? Reed Shepard. Yep. Okay, there you go. If you're wrong, you can never come back. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.